goes. This looks like it's going to be an exciting year. I can talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing here in 2018. So in terms of titles, I'm really excited about. Uh, let's go start right here. Deep Rock Galactic. If you've played Vermintide, this is everything you like about Vermintide, except it's dwarves, they're in space, and they're mining. Oh my god, mind-blowing. It's everything you could possibly want. Dwarves in space, mining, and shooting bugs. Title I'm buying in 2018. Let's just watch the video. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, so they've all got different classes. So it's very like Vermintide. They've all got different classes. You can see him tossing flares and things. So you got it. So the darkness is really one of the things you got to fight here. That's awesome. Oh, <laughs> and you're fighting hordes. I love it. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> I can't feel my beard. <laughs> Danger, darkness, dwarves. That looks like a title. That's going to be one heck of a title. So that's an exciting game for 2018. What else do I have on 2018 here? Uh, ooh, Iconoclasts. This one looks good. Let's see if we can get in here. Rated T for teen. So this was like a steampunky sort of game, but it's like more of your Castlevania sort of side-scroller. Looked really good. The animation looked fluid. The voice acting looked good. Sounded good. Had a bit of a solid plot behind it. So I'm excited to see where this takes us. Let's watch. Let's watch. Let the magic happen. digging it. Oh. Such a, such a good retro platformer look. Fun sprite animations. This looks great. A lot of movement side scroller puzzles. Almost like a Metroid. Like a little more Metroid than Castlevania, I want to say now. Oh, that's going to be a fun one. I'm going to have to get like. A controller, though. An actual proper controller. Goodness. What else did we have? Lightfall. Let's check you out. Lightfall. Coming in March. Now, this one I know got a lot of hype at a couple of the festivals. So, this is another side-scroller. We were wandering the show floor yesterday. We were. And we saw this beautiful indie game yes. called Lightfall. And we yeah. were like, whoa. The thing that really looks interesting to me, this is a side-scroller, is just all the void spaces. Normally, side-scrollers look like the last one. They're very frantic. They're very crowded. So here, having that, apparently, this box that you can create as you go, that's your main tool. Suddenly, you're, that, that void becomes a resource in the game. Oh, that's exciting. That's interesting. Oh, so you oh, and you're using it to solve puzzles. So this is really taking the whole... Notion of the companion cube to this other level in a side scroller. That's really fun. That's really fun. So it moves, it warps. Yeah, so, so that got a lot of hype. 
Uh, here's another title I want to see in 2018, Forgotten Anne. And this really looks like something that, it looks like someone just took a Studio Ghibli film and said, hey, let's make a game. Just this beautiful animation. In a world of forgotten objects. Apply for validation stickers here. Remember, you're not rotten, just forgotten. Two humans must find their way home. <laughs> Stay vigilant. We are going home soon, man. A young girl tasked with keeping order amidst a rebellion. Tiffany, it's me. Boy, just look at the detail in all the backgrounds. So lovely. Of the spirit world and the choices she will make depends on you. But the level of effort in this is just so rich. Like all the lighting, the, the nice little light sources, these little touches and flourishes. It almost looks like the old Dragon's Lair games. It's so cinematic when they say it's a cinematic game. I wonder if it'll play like that too, or if it'll be more like the Telltale games. Why should I tell you? The world oh, this will be nice. Has abandoned us. You and I, Anne. Oh, that looks amazing. I, I can't wait. Can't wait. It'll be fantastic. So that'll be on PC as well. That's great. What else did I want to get? What else was on the list of things? Skill Attack! So apparently you can get a demo for this, which I may have to download. Maybe I can play this. Maybe I can grab that. Let's see if I can grab that while this is in the background here. Nice, there's the demo. Introducing the next very first generation <laughs> from Yakuza. Okay. If, if, you, if you're older like me, you'll remember that exact sort of format in the old Nintendo ads from the early 1980s. More this, more that. Yeah, this is exactly the Nintendo format. A bit more than meets the eye. A bit more Anakazam. A bit more seriously again. A bit more spicy. A bit more flappy and friendly. A bit more ha. I'm awesome. A bit more of everything and more. It's everything you want in an action game, even if you never knew you wanted it. Seriously, though, that cat guy is weird. Coming January 19th. Well, that'll be out soon. Skeleton. That's now like nine days away. Power. Skeleton power. Skeleton power. Witchwood. Oh, now Witchwood looks, also looks like it'll be a fun one. Witchwood looks pretty solid as a title. Just because it looks like it's turning the whole Witch of the Woods upside down here. Where instead you're playing as the witch, but it's more of your sort of British mythos. Um, you know, the sort of... You're still playing the old Crone of the Woods, but, you know, benevolent in a sense. Gathering herbs, making your, you know, spells and concoctions, if you will. But it's mostly just doing this. But then there's these villagers who maybe have uh, done misdeeds or avarice and you sort of pass judgment on them. So you're kind of looking out for the town, but you're not part of it, is my impression of what they're talking about the game. But I, I want to watch that again, just because... Look at look at the drawings and the animation. Just such... such it's so lovely. Just these beautiful colors. It's almost Rococo-like. Beautiful colors. So simple, but so evocative. Just the little details here and there, all the drying herbs. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I can't wait to get my hands on this one and get into it. This looks like it'll be more fun than Gorogoa was for me, and I loved Gorogoa. That will be fantastic. Such an effective little little trailer. A place for the unwilling. Oh, this is the um, sort of horror game. It's got a bit of a Cthulhu-esque thing going on. So the premise is, is somehow you inherited this business from your friend who killed himself and you're trying to run the business while at the same time going to this shadow world to find this supernatural reason why he killed himself. So it has this very Call of Cthulhu mystique about it. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. But again, look at all these details. It's so lovely, the shading and the art. 
I love how creative these indie games are getting. Like, no, no, no two of them have been alike so far. Which is a cyberpunk game. The Red Strings Club. Yes. This is a very cyberpunk game. Let's watch the trailer. Watching the trailer. Another real pixelated retro feel. I love how much effort people put into making these games look like old games. But the animations and the lighting effects are so good and so smooth that it, it makes it better than a retro game in a way. They look like the games I grew up with. They look like the games I really loved, but at the same time, they have all the accoutrement benefits of being a modern game. It's so lovely. So that's proper cyberpunk sort of influencing things and nibbling at the heels of society there. That'll be fun. That'll be a lot of fun. Truberbrook. Oh, this is the one with, uh, okay. A friend of mine recommended this to me and I'm I'm really interested to see where this goes because this is somewhere across between the X-Files meets Twin Peaks in 1967 Germany. So, uh, let's see, where is, yes. Germany, 1967. Beverly, you wouldn't believe what a charming little place they've sent me to feeling chilled out already. Hang on. What is this? This is Trüberbrook, a thrilling mystery adventure game set in 1960s Cold War Germany. It's the story of Tannhauser, an American physics student in his late 20s who wins a trip to the remote village of Trüberbrook. Things get strange when some documents disappear from his room. This is puzzling. Who on earth would steal a paper on quantum physics? It soon becomes very clear that he didn't win this trip by accident. He is here to save the world. What do you think? I think we need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> Proper hero. Hi, we are BTF and this is our Kickstarter. Things you can expect. Crazy scientists, um, transdimensional traveling, Ooh. Stasi people, dinosaurs, Dinosaur. Evil mega corporations. Nice, yeah, nice. You can yeah. kind of imagine you're, you're, it you're as, selling me on uh, it here, guys. You're selling me on it. In 1960s Germany, right? Right, and with a touch of Monkey Island. You are doing Kickstarter, right? Exactly. Ron Gilbert. Oh my and if goodness. And video game in post-war Germany ain't special enough for you. Here's more. All of our sceneries are built by hand by our devoted set wow. designers. Wow. So that's why it looked we that way. Those are actual. Wow. Different hours of the day. As miniatures well as and bigatures here. That's impressive. Also, we can change seasons by redecorating the model. The sceneries are later digitized in a process called photogrammetry and blended with characters and visual effects. Oh, that's fantastic. This way, Look we how are lovely able to that transfer is. the real models into the virtual world of our game. The game features full voiceover by our talented voice actors in both English and Deutsch. Nur ganz kurz, ich mach, uh, mach die Hauptrolle. Ich bin der Star. Huh? Nein. Gameplay-wise, Trüberbrook is a somewhat classic adventure game with a modern approach. The game has a strong this is almost focus like a Sierra on game. and narrative. The story unfolds as you interact with the environment, talk to other characters, and solve puzzles. The puzzles are designed to integrate into the narrative. The interface so very is like a Sierra and game. elegant, I like with that. different approaches for mouse-based and controller-based navigation. We are Excellent. developing the game in Unity 3D and are releasing it for every major platform. Right now, we already finished a huge part of the game. Last year, we got through the story and the game design, and in the last few months, we started creating the first scenes and characters. But there's a whole lot that still has to be built, and a lot of characters are needed to fill this beautiful town. You can actively help us finish the game while collecting one of the many cool rewards we've prepared for you, and become part of the game. Thanks for backing us. Hi, this is Ron Gilbert. Please back this project. That's going to be an amazing game. You can just see how much love is already going into that title. That's going to be fantastic. Let's see here. Th this looks like a silly one. 
properly silly. Pilot a corpse. I'm sold. So it's basically one directional while you're dealing with gravitational spin and other such things in space. Oh yes. This looks like a completely delightful time waster. Delightful. Drift through space. So peaceful. I hope they keep the classical music in the game while you're playing. It would be so lovely. Oh, giant space, baby. 2001. <laughs> Die again. Die again. Die again. Oh, he shattered. Oh, no, I just noticed. His little skull rattles around in his helmet. Oh. <laughs> All that is transitory is but a metaphor. John Wolfgang von Goethe. Lonely astronaut. That's going to be fun. Total time waster, but so much fun. Etherborn coming 2018. Altered Matter presents. We have another beautiful set of environments, but the environmentals in these games. Like, this is just very evocative and minimalist, but so vivid. Oh. So this is very much relational to your environment, so you're just relational to gravity. So wherever you are is where gravity applies. That's interesting. So you're kind of the center of the universe, effectively. The world literally revolves around you. I'm sure there's all the puzzles and things that go along with it. That could be very intriguing. Oh, that would be... That could be... That looks like it's going to be a fun puzzle game. Definitely will require a controller, though. That will not be a mouse and keyboard game. That's a controller game. Oh, now this. This looks like one of the games. This will probably be my game of the year right here. It, it just looks like... If you've ever seen Kung Fury, it looks like someone took a video game and dipped it in Kung Fury. And I am so okay with that. So beyond okay with that. <laughs> yes. Again, this, this incredibly advanced retro look. It's making old look good. As opposed to just old. There's been just such a slew of these in the last few years, and it keeps getting better. Like you've ever played Dead Cells, something like this, yeah. Fantastic. Boy, they, they, it's so good at selling the hype. I'm I'm already here. High density magic found. <laughs> it, it's such a self-aware kind of retro nostalgia. Awesome. Wait, was that Kylo Ren? <laughs> such a 1980s Tron vibe to the music and the sound. I love it. The big synthesizers. The blocky faux 3D and the isometric 3D. Oh, it's great. The illusion of depth. Fantastic. Again, the color of the background. Though this one, I think, is winning on the sound incorporation as well. Bye, hon. Whoa. Giant techno frog. Oh, yeah. That, again, selling, selling the nostalgia in a way that has been repackaged. That's, 
it's pure 1980 through the lens of 2020. I love it. I love it. I'm not normally a tower defense guy, but this looked just utterly charming. The, the, the premise being that the monsters actually are coming out into your room at night, and you have to build pillow forts and use, like, nerf guns to defend your bedroom. <laughs> and it's such a charming concept. It's so wonderful. Survive the night. There's got to be some conceit with the parents involved in this game, but that looks great. Uh, again, just such a charming concept. It, 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 it charms me over. It wins me over with the charm. Product not yet rated. Product not yet rated. Oh? Oh? Uh-oh. Monsters. Destroy. Destroy! Ice cream. Nice. Alien robots. Robot aliens. Alien aliens. Nice. <laughs> or not. Mugster. So I guess you're trying to, to save the world kind of thing. That's interesting. It's in, it's, it, it looks like they took Human Fall Flat and said, let's go and give it an actual world to try to save. I can get behind that. I can totally get behind that. Ah, Moonlighter. I saw this one, and this looked great to me because I, I'm a big fan of Stardew Valley. A big fan. And this has all the trappings of a Stardew Valley but focusing on the adventure side of it. So it's literally, you're a shopkeeper, and you have to get to know all these villagers, but then you sort of go out and, like, have to go dungeoneering and find the stuff the villagers actually want. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Another retro cheek sort of game digging it oh no death by monster so get your adventuring gear upgraded go and keep attacking the monsters nice get your clientele up Boss monster. There's another game in a similar vein that looked really good called Quest Giver. And I don't have a link to it, unfortunately. I'll have to find it later. But Quest Giver was essentially the idea of being similar, but rather than going on the adventures, you're playing the role of the person who gives all the adventurers their quests. So what was normally the NPC role now is your primary function. And that 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 looks so amusing to me just to turn the thing on its end. Uh, the last night, this came out on E3 in 2017, and boy, did it look good. It's supposed to be coming out this year. Another big cyberpunk genre sort of game. And man, this may be one of the best. Like, there's a bunch of cyberpunk entries coming in this year. I already had Club Red Strings. There's a couple of other ones, but I'm not as sold on them. This may be the best cyberpunk game in the last decade, if not longer. I'm just, just, just watch. The vibe, the tone it hits is so perfect. The lighting, the sort of Blade Runner, lots of dimness and darkness and how just subdued everything is, but how intense it is when it's there. 
you know, all this subdued lighting, but these intense lights. So it's like dark, it's misty, and very vibrant suddenly. That great lighting effects. Oh, so lovely. Yeah, I, I, I really think this is going to be the best cyberpunk game we've seen in a long time. It may be one... It, this may just be game of the year. It may just win the darn thing. But it just looks so good. So I'm really looking forward to all of that. I'm, I'm, I'm more looking forward to getting to share it with all of you guys. This is going to be so much fun.